Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to smoke a 28 pound brisket in the Masterbuilt electric smoker. You don't want to miss this video, so stick around, let's get to the video. When you're in the store, you want to find a brisket with as little fat as possible. You're usually buying these briskets by the pound, so you don't want to be paying for a lot of fat that you're going to be carving up in the butchering and trimming process. So look for one that uh, is pretty flexible, so you can pick them up, you can bend them and twist them, and the ones that have a lot of fat on them tend to be really stiff, and this one that I'm picking up is uh, the best one that I found. You can tell it's kind of flexible, and I'm bending it, and it's actually bending over on itself, so I selected this one. All right, the first thing we want to do is we want to brine the brisket. So in this case, we're going to be putting the brine solution inside of the brisket with a brine injection. What I've got here is a mixture of salt and beef stock. So we're just going to take that and we're going to inject it while the meat is still wrapped in the plastic because it's going to be way easier to clean up afterwards. So all we have to do is go with the grain and penetrate through the plastic about halfway into the brisket. We'll do an injection there and then we'll move over about an inch and we'll do another injection. And we're gonna do an injection about one inch all over the brisket, including in the point muscle. And after we're done injecting, we're going to slice open the outer plastic on the brisket. And there's quite a bit of liquid in there because there was already some bud and moisture inside of the plastic before we started injecting. And then we added in all of that brine solution to it. So dump it out onto some paper towels to dry just to get all of that moisture off of the brisket. The underside of this brisket is pretty lean, so we won't need to do much trimming there. But when I flip it over, you can see there's quite a bit of fat on the other side. This is called the fat cap, and it's made up of two types of fat. The first type is really hard and stiff. It's the type of fat that doesn't render down very well in the smoker, and it isn't what most people would consider edible. You'll need to remove most, if not all, of this hard fat. The second type is soft fat. This is the pillowy soft fat that renders down and melts on your tongue. You want to keep this fat, but trim it down to about a quarter inch layer or less of thickness. The goal is to have a thin layer that almost completely renders down and bastes the brisket as you cook it. There's two reasons for this. First, you want the real star of the show to be the meat itself. A huge strip of fat can really take away from the experience, and some people will just peel it off before eating the meat anyway. Second, a thinner layer of fat lets the smoke penetrate into the meat and results in much better bark formation. After trimming down the fat, I like to cut the corner off of the flat muscle perpendicular to the direction the grain of the meat runs. When the brisket's done, we always want to cut it against the grain of the meat so it falls apart in our mouths much easier. So cutting a notch out now tells me exactly which direction I need to cut when it's done. I also like to make a second cut that runs parallel to the grain of the flat. This, again, helps me figure out which direction the grain is running when it comes time to cut it after the meat's done. But is all this trimming a waste of meat? Well, not really. You're actually trimming off edges of the brisket that are going to get pretty burned up and crispy anyway, and trimming it like this actually helps the brisket be more aerodynamic and cook more evenly in the smoker. Now that I've trimmed the brisket, I could just cook it whole. Usually I'd do it this way if I was cooking with my offset smoker or a smoker with a bigger cooking chamber, but my 30-inch Masterbuilt electric smoker just isn't wide enough to cook this large of a brisket. So I'm going to separate the point and flat muscle and cook them on a separate rack of the smoker. This is pretty easy to do, but it takes a bit of precision knife work. Start by flipping the brisket over onto the non-fat cap side. You're looking for a thick seam of hard fat that separates the two muscles. Now cut into that fat with the short knife strokes while pulling the two muscles apart. Eventually the two muscles will almost come apart and you can just slice the remaining thin piece of the point muscle that's still attached to the flat. Now you have two smaller pieces of brisket that can easily fit into the Masterbuilt electric smoker on separate racks. The next step is to apply a rub to your brisket. I like to sprinkle kosher salt on the brisket before I put any rub on it. I do this for two reasons. First, it gives me more control over how much salt I'm using and how evenly it gets applied. With any rub, it's all mixed up with other ingredients, so you can't really be sure you're getting an even amount of salt over every square inch of the brisket. So putting the salt on separately gives you that consistency. Second, putting the salt on separate from the rub gives the salt breathing space to penetrate into the meat 
and start brining it. This is one of the four pillars of good barbecue that I often talk about in my videos. If you want to produce consistently high quality barbecue, then it's very important to brine your meat. Dry brining the brisket by sprinkling salt over it and leaving it for a while is a quick and easy way to get the benefits of brining without leaving it in water brine solution overnight. After the salt's applied, leave it for an hour or two to brine. This will also help it to come up to room temperature before you put it in the smoker, which is important for even cooking and reducing your cook time. When you come back to it, you're going to want to apply your rub. In this case, I'm applying a chili powder, pepper, and paprika based rub. You can find the recipe for the rub in the description section below this video. After the rub is applied, it's time to put the brisket in the Masterbuilt electric smoker. Now let's talk about my setup. First of all, I put some aluminum foil over the drip deflector for easier cleanup. And I filled the water bowl with half a cup of water and half a cup of apple cider vinegar. This adds a bit of moisture to the cooking chamber and prevents the brisket from drying out as much during the cook. The chip tray was filled to the brim with half hickory pellets and half cherry pellets. I find the pellets produce smoke for longer so I opted for them instead of wood chips. I placed the point muscle on the bottom rack closest to the heating element of the Masterbuilt electric smoker because this cut of meat has a lot of intramuscular fat and a lot of connective tissue. It can handle the heat a lot better than the flat muscle above it. This setup helps both cuts cook at an even speed and temperature with enough space around them to get lots of airflow and smoke. All of that airflow and surface area exposed to the smoke is really gonna help with the bark formation. If you just try to jam a large brisket into the Masterbuilt 30 inch smoker, it's not going to get a lot of smoke exposure and airflow. So this is another good reason to separate the point and the flat muscle for big briskets. Now for all the time and temp guys out there, I'll cut to the chase. It took 10 hours at 225 degrees Fahrenheit, but let's break that down. I cooked it for four hours at 225 degrees Fahrenheit in the Masterbuilt electric. At that point, the internal temperature was reading at about 165 degrees. This is the temperature when brisket hits what's called the stall. Basically, the moisture evaporating from the meat cools it faster than the smoker can heat it up. So it stays at the same temperature for a very long time until all that moisture burns off or you wrap it. Now we don't wanna lose all that moisture. So at around 165 degrees Fahrenheit, we wanna wrap the brisket in aluminum foil or butcher's paper. We wrap it at that temperature for two reasons. First, it helps the brisket maintain moisture and prevents it from drying out. There's nothing worse than working for 10 to 15 hours on a brisket and having it come out dry. Second, it helps the brisket cook faster. By wrapping it, you can help it retain heat and power through the stall, which shaves multiple hours off your cook time. Wrapping is what I like to call the second pillar of great barbecue. It seems simple, but it's one simple thing you can do to almost guarantee that you're going to produce amazing brisket. You could skip the injection, forget to add salt and rub, cook it too long, and do any number of things to mess it up. But as long as you wrap a brisket at 165 degrees Fahrenheit and cook it long enough for the fat to render, it's an almost guaranteed success. For this brisket, I took it out after four hours when it hit 165 degrees internal temperature and laid it down on some butcher paper. I like to use butcher paper because it lets the brisket breathe a little and it preserves the bark better than wrapping it in aluminum foil. I drizzled some honey on the brisket to add some sweetness and caramelization. Then I spooned some rendered brisket fat on top of each one so it would melt and baste the brisket for the remainder of the cook. I also spooned in some beef stock to help add some moisture. After that, I wrapped each piece tightly and put them back in the Masterbuilt electric smoker for another five to six hours for a total cook time of 10 hours. You know your brisket's done when it reaches an internal temperature of 195 to 205 degrees Fahrenheit. Brisket is a unique cut of beef because it has a lot of connective tissue made out of collagen. 195 to 205 is the temperature when this connective tissue breaks down. It's also the temperature when the fat starts to render and melt. So it's really critical to hit this internal temperature. This is what I like to call the third pillar of great barbecue. Hit the correct temperature to render fat and break down the connective tissue. If you don't, you're going to have a really tough brisket. But don't just go by that guideline. 
When you're probing the meat and it's reading 195 to 205, move the temperature probe around and test how tender it is. It should have the consistency of room temperature butter. You can also move it around and lift an edge to see how flexible it is. If it's still pretty stiff, but it's reading 195 to 205 degrees, then keep it in for about another hour or two until it's done. After making a few of these, you'll get to know when it's done just by inserting your thermometer and feeling the resistance and texture of the meat. In this cook, I actually cooked the flat an hour longer than the point muscle because it hit the temperature I wanted, but it didn't have that room temperature butter feeling. So I left it in a bit longer and it came out perfect. When the brisket comes out of the smoker, it's very important to let it rest for at least an hour. The brisket will actually continue to cook and break down connective tissue after you remove it from the smoker. So you need to let it finish cooking and gradually come back down in temperature. This is going to let the muscle fibers relax and reabsorb the hot moisture that's flowing around in the meat. If you don't let it rest, all that moisture is going to gush out as soon as you cut into it and the meat is going to be dry. This is the fourth and final pillar of great barbecue. Rest your meat to allow it to finish cooking and reabsorb moisture. I've actually let brisket rest for about four or five hours at barbecue competitions, parties, and catering events. What I've found is that the longer you let it rest, the better it usually turns out. The only thing you have to worry about is you don't want to leave it in to rest so long that it drops below 140 degrees Fahrenheit because you want it to be hot when you serve it and you also run into food safety issues if the temperature drops too low. For this cook, I set up a cooler with some hot water on the bottom to help hold the temperature. Then I set up a grate supported by two bowls to keep the grate out of the water. Next, I put in the brisket, still wrapped in the butcher paper, and then I took some old coveralls and placed them on top of the brisket to fill up the remaining air space in the cooler. Then I let the brisket rest for about an hour. I would have let it rest longer, but I had a dinner party to serve, so an hour was just fine. After resting, I took the brisket out and laid it on a cutting board. It's really handy if you have a large Tupperware bin to put the cutting board in, because it helps capture all the drippings and fat when you're cutting into it. When I cut into the brisket, I'm first scratching off a bit of the bark so I can confirm which direction the grain of the meat is running. Then I start cutting quarter inch slices against the grain. You can also slice the point muscle into one inch cubes, sauce them up with some sweet sauce, and then put them back in the smoker for a few more hours to crisp up. These are called burnt ends. But usually I just slice the point and flat into quarter inch strips and coat them with a really thin finishing sauce made out of brisket fat, beef stock, and sauteed onions. So let's do a quick recap. First, brine your brisket with an injection and dry brine it with kosher salt for about an hour. Second. Wrap your brisket when it hits an internal temperature of 165 degrees. Third, hit your target internal temperature of 195 to 205 degrees. And finally, let your brisket rest for at least an hour before you cut into it. These are the four pillars of great barbecue. If you follow them, your brisket is almost guaranteed to come out great. I hope you found this video helpful, and I'd like to hear about how your brisket turns out in the Masterbuilt Electric Smoker, so just post in the comments section below. As always, the rub recipe and notes are in the description section, so check those out. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please make sure to subscribe so you can get notified of all my latest tips and tricks for cooking great barbecue. Thanks again, and happy smoking!